the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, O oh my soul O oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before O oh my soul I'll worship your holy name. And on that day, when my strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forever. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. I'll worship Your holy name. I'll worship Your holy. Name. Yeah, we got to. Hi, guys. I'm here. I'm going to leave you uh, just on to sit for a few minutes. I'll be right back. Okay. Hello. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My Hi, Savior, buddy. my soul How are you, Barb? I am doing okay, Lord. and you? And we're tired and eating too much, getting fat. <laughs> I can relate to that. Here's D. She doesn't want to. Yeah. Oh.
400 and something. Hmm. Hmm. The average is about 450. Hmm. All right. Then you just go on forever with that then? Nope. <laughs> we are absolutely <laughs> hoping not. No. <laughs> Well, there's rumor that it might end June 6th. Well, that's pretty soon. That the sons and yeah, daughters of the King of Glory may arise and shine. That the sons well, when I was in Dallas, I had done, done it for eight weeks. I don't know how long Marvin went up there. Well, this is the day, this is the day. 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 When we first start down at the church parking lot. I will rejoice. I will Yep. I will rejoice and be glad in it. One day at the this Jubilee, and then they the moved it to the church parking lot. This is the day. Oh, I've missed a few days. Oh, yeah. In the beginning, God created. That was March, wasn't it, when you were down there? Yeah, it was March 14th is the date that I remember when all these kind of started and we had Every son and daughter of the King of Glory arise and shine. Every son and daughter of the King of Glory now arise and shine as we declare. This is the day, 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 and there were quite a few cars Let coming to get them. I mean, I, I would think there was a thousand plus. I don't know now. It doesn't look like there's that many, but Let your glory fill the earth. I think we're dropping off some. Yeah. Let your glory we need survivors so you guys can come down and drive. Are you talking about the Jubilee meals on the old deal? This is the day that the Lord is made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Me? Oh, yeah. They are. They just hired the flu and they have people for a lot of high school graduates and all that. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. This is the day. This is the day. You don't see anybody. They just come to the Lord and they are. I've only seen the OGP section there where they come out every once in a while. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. But I V knocks on your door. Thank you, Cardinal. That's yes. 
fix their engine in the window. The they, they have home delivery. I think it might be in either side of the mile. Out of the ashes we rise. There's they no one like you. And that's free also. Now that's $9.99. Like delivery. Oh, really? Oh, you have to spend $30 or more. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. But a restaurant in that uh, app. None like you. Where did you go? Applebee's. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. I see Bobby. God, you are higher than any other. It's under a brand name. Our God is healer. I'm waiting to see you. Our God. Our God. Into the darkness for us. Then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? Oh, there and is. if our God yeah. is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Hi, everybody. Hi. Can you Hi. hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah. I got to shut that down. Checking on what's going out that way. Okay. Great. Okay, this time I'm going to ask uh, up front, user's iPhone, who is this? Take a guess. Okay, hi, Judy. <laughs> Good. <laughs> You're not driving this time. Nope. Not were, this time. You were on the road, uh, what, last was it Sunday? Sunday, yeah. yeah. We went out to uh, Ogallala to see my sister. Good, 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 good. Um, ba -ba -bum. What else do I want to have in front of me here for just a moment? See that? Good. All right. Um, sound check. <laughs> Oh, I heard a little bit there. Um, Barb, you okay? You hear us? I can hear you. Okay. All right. Eddie, you're still there? Can I hear you? Oh, I was asleep. Thanks for waking me up. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. All right. Good. Jerry, you're moving in, in a bit of a slideshow. Okay, I got a thumbs up, though. Good, 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 good. 
All right. And Dan didn't say anything last week, but I see his name up there, but that's okay. You can you can chime in if you want. Angela Greenfield's here too. I see Angela's yep, I see Angela's name. I heard her. Now, uh, I'm gonna ask one thing. Bobby, say hi. See if they can hear you right now. Somebody tell me if you can hear Bobby. A blessed evening for all of us. Are we okay? He's okay. We're sh there we go. Yeah. We're sharing a, a microphone uh, that way. Good. All right. Uh, so, uh, pop quiz uh, was uh, Sunday was fun, huh? Amen. I got an amen yes. and some. Okay, so I know uh, Angela said uh, concerned about working at Walmart and carrying stuff in, and uh, Eddie and Dee uh, concerned about uh, everything. That's awesome. That's that's fantastic. But I tell you, we had a great day. Uh, at least in terms of having, we had about 60 people uh, in attendance physically. Um, well, I said about, we counted. We had 60 people physically <laughs> in attendance. Uh, and then we still had a lot more uh, on the internet. So that was, that was really cool. I want to make sure that this jumping I'm seeing is not me. It's, it's everyone. Anyone else having problems with uh, jumping? Johnson. You're not seeing any jumping on that screen no, there. Okay, I, I've got no, a I've got a test. Okay, guinea pig here. Uh, all right, I'll try not to uh, to move. I noticed last week at the end, I, I go back and and watch these things just to see how things worked, and I was sitting in a lower chair, and it felt like I had to keep uh, moving just to uh, to get around. So. Uh, Hopefully this will work a little bit better this week. Mary, are you are you uh, working? Do you have a full load with kids there at your Mary Munsell? I'm pointing at you, but you can't see where I'm pointing. Back to normal. Oh, yeah, we're back to normal almost. And the amount of kids. Almost back to normal. And then what was the next sentence? In the amount of kids. In the amount of kids. Have. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. So, okay. So if you have your uh, Bibles uh, in front of you or some kind of uh, something that'll get your Bible up in front of you, uh, we'll go to chapter eight of Ezekiel. Uh, if we have time, we'll get to it. We might roll over to chapter 11, um, but we'll, uh, uh, we won't skip over the, the big news at the beginning either of, uh, 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 of the, of Ezekiel. Uh, Bobby said, we're not going to skip the, uh, the big show, are we? No, so we'll do that here in a little bit. Uh, let's, let's do this. In fact, uh, Bobby, would you uh, say a, a word of prayer for us as we get started? We're going to start with uh, a prayer right now, shall we? Go. Heavenly Father, we come at this time to say thank you. Thank you for the blessings you give to us every day of our lives. The blessing that we have is we can come together and study this evening together. It may be not face to face, but we know, Father, it is heart to heart, and we're appreciative and we love that. Father, we ask you to be with those that are not able to be with us during these times, and the ones that need thy love, thy assistance, and thy healing hand and helping hand. We all need that, Father, because of the strength that we get from you in our daily lives. We can never say thank you enough for that. Continue to be with us in every day of our lives as we look for you, for our guidance and our love, Father. Continue to be with us as we go through this life to up and show that you are indeed our God, our creator, and our biggest love. These things we do pray in Jesus' most beautiful name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. So in, uh, in Ezekiel, let, let's... See if I can um, cue up a uh, uh, a leading question, and I'll give you a hint. It's in the front uh, of our study outline in the uh, in the background. If you don't recognize the answer to my question, okay, was uh, in terms of identifying uh, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, 
between the writing techniques of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, was there something that we noticed that was of a significant uh, difference between the two? And I'll just tell you, it's the start of the well it's the second paragraph on our uh, in the background section of our the front of our outline is is what i'm looking at and you probably noticed it even if we just read from uh ezekiel chapter one uh verse one in the 13th year in the fourth month in the fifth day of the month i was among the exiles by the chibar canal uh, the heavens were opened and i saw visions of god on the fifth day of the month it was the fifth year of the exile of King Jehoiakim, uh, Chin, Jehoiachin. Uh, if you remember, there's, there's two of those guys. So um, what stands out just in that little reading? And hint, it's in our author's guide, too. Well, use the word time frame. Okay, Bobby said the word time frame. You, you notice the details. Uh, that he gives there. In fact, uh, our uh, study authors uh, said uh, Ezekiel, unlike Jeremiah, gives detailed list of dates. And so we have uh, this, this uh, uh, in fact, they say unique among the prophets uh, and all the dates are arranged in chronological order uh, except those given uh, in chapters 29 and 40. So uh, we see Ezekiel uh, tracking for us uh, some very specific dates and giving us some specific time frames. Uh, um, <laughs> also there in chapter one, I know I told you to turn to chapter eight, but here in, in chapter one, he says uh, he was by, uh, he was with the exiles uh, by the Chibar uh, Canal. So uh, Ezekiel, is is with the exiles uh he was a part of the first uh deportation or deportation or however you pronounce that want to uh to the babylon uh area so uh uh taken from jerusalem uh he so, somehow he survived the the attack and was chosen and uh, and taken with the first group of exiles um and so we get this context that he's seeing one where he's seeing these visions and two he's he's with the exiles and he's uh, by by the side of a river you can imagine they had an encampment um, uh, uh, okay in the babylonian captivity this is uh off subject well out of out of ezekiel here okay who else do we know was taken to Babylon? We're not studying. We're not there yet. Hint, hint. We're not there yet. But who else do we know has been taken to Babylon? Daniel. Did everybody hear that? I got a Daniel over here in the room. I could say who else then, because we, we along with Daniel, we have these others. What, what's, yeah. Right. So, right. Uh, so we got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, here's all I wanted to get to. Where are they? You, you know, from your stories, from your Sunday school stories, right? And from reading, uh, we haven't read there yet. We're not to Daniel yet, but okay. Where is Daniel this whole time that we learn about the life of Daniel in captivity in Babylon? Where is he? It's a real minor point, but I'm, I never, don't remember the name. Well, Nebuchadnezzar, his his palace, they're in the same community. So we're in the palace. Yeah. Okay, so Daniel is serving. Uh, Daniel is serving in the capital and in the palace. And here we have, uh, just to point out, Ezekiel is uh, out here in uh, uh, in the countryside, right? right. Okay. Um, uh, next. Before we jump over to, to chapter eight, what what are some of the visions that we know of uh, Ezekiel? What are some of the major uh, visions? Uh, Ezekiel is is given a task to uh, 
uh, instruct and teach uh, and give prophecy, right? Much like Jeremiah, his, his topic is much like Jeremiah. Um, and I guess the question is, uh, in what ways does uh, Ezekiel communicate his uh, prophecies? Visions. Visions. We very good. So we have this vision, and he's telling, he's describing his visions. Um. What what else? He does things to represent what's going on. Yes, he does things. Um, uh, he act, acts out some of uh, these sort of. Uh, so we have. Uh, we, we understand parables, telling a story. Well, much like Jeremiah did a few times, Isaiah did some. Uh, here, Ezekiel acts out uh, some of his uh, prophetic messages. Um, he wasn't allowed to speak in front of the elders, was he? He had that pantomime. Yes, there, there was, there was a point where he wasn't uh, allowed to speak at all, and he wasn't able to speak uh, for a while. Yes, Angela. Yes, right, right. Um, okay, so that's the what. Now we back to the visions. W what are a couple of the significant visions that we uh, that we latch that we remember that are easy to remember? We latch on to. Um, what are some of the visions? Uh, the first one almost sounds like a UFO in a way. Yes, a UFO almost sounds like a UFO, right? Because imagine, uh, yeah, imagine. In fact, uh, okay, so here we go. This will be uh, maybe fun. So we've got the uh, visions that Daniel has. I'm sorry, Ezekiel has. Uh, we have we have Ezekiel's wheels, right? The the wheels in the middle of the wheels. You sing the song, right? The uh, almost uh, I love that Angela said almost like a, a UFO. W what are some of the parts of that of that image? I'm trying to get that up there. Oh, there's one. Uh, so we've got the wheels and the wheels. Uh, he was hovering it. Guy with something coming off it, and that. I don't think it was a spaceship. It just sounds like whatever spiritual thing you saw. Yeah, sounds like a UFO. So. Sure, you're right, right, right. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that some of these? Uh, uh, well, I guess it, it's interesting. Uh, one way to say it. Uh, some of these biblical visions. Yeah, people sometimes say, "Well, that sounds like something that we can." imagine today because we have different technologies and whatever but whatever it is how is he describing it i don't know if that's the right question to lead you to where i want to go but but okay hint the way we look back at, at revelation and some of these how, how is ezekiel describing the visions that he has See if that question works. Well, the physical is the four individuals. There's four wings, hands, feet, hooves. They're at the corners. They look straight ahead, and they got four faces of their head. Okay. You know, they don't look at either way or around. And the interesting thing was they were covered with eyes. Okay. But then they're, covered, they're carrying the chair or the the throne. That's the word. The, the throne of God. The right. throne. They're, the picture of, the throat of God is bright. That's the only way I can explain it. Brilliance, yes. Brilliance. Okay, yes. Good. So, yeah, Bobby walked us through that. So the, the wheels and the wheels, that's the old uh, spiritual song, the wheel and the wheel, right? Okay. But more than that, the, the creatures with the wings and the eyes, and we, we don't know what all that means, um, but holding up that... Uh, uh, there, that throne, that throne that is um, depicted, and uh, here's one artist's rendering of uh, of that. Okay, Bobby talked us through the text, but in making this description, 
what is it, how is Ezekiel describing it? Uh, and and now I'll say we're we're past the literal description of the text. What's he What's he doing to describe his vision? He does it like John kind of tries to put it in things that he recognizes or people will recognize. Thank you. Yeah, two things. One, he he might be using words that people might recognize. Okay, we know what a wheel is. Whatever he saw looked whatever he saw looked like an animal and with faces and wings and okay. But the big thing is, Jerry said, kind of like John, he's using the words that he has, using words that maybe people would understand, might be familiar with, words that um, he couldn't say, okay, Angela says it, it kind of looks, sounds like a UFO, and we all have images in our minds of that. Well, that wouldn't mean anything to someone uh, in, in the Jerusalem exile to Babylon. Okay. Bobby's waving at me, so go. They would understand the following, a great cloud with brightness around it and fire flashing. Remember on Mount Sinai, the Lord was always there. They would should up and understand what was, where the Lord was there, and this would up and be the same. Okay, good. Uh, the the glory of the Lord, yeah. right, is often uh, described as uh, a fire. Uh, here's another artist rendering. It's really wild, uh, really, really wild. But as we read that description, it kind of kind of sounds uh, pretty wild. All right, we're we're getting to. Uh, simply, he's having these uh, fantastic visions, and he's having to put into words, or yeah, put into words uh, the the vision that uh, that he's having. Um, the message of this, uh, the ultimate message. When, when Ezekiel sees the wheels and the wheels and the throne uh, rises up and travels, uh, he, he sees a, an image. Uh, and, uh, Jeremiah saw a similar uh, image. We're going to see uh, this, this theme, as painful as it is. What, what, do, what does he ultimately see? What does Ezekiel ultimately see with this uh, with this uh, chariot on wheels of fire and so forth? Oh. Well, I, I think he sees uh, high level angels. Okay, he's trying to describe yes, yes these these images that uh, are, are hard to put into words. Well, the last, last says the uh, appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Okay. So here we see the, this image of the glory of the Lord, and, and it's leaving. Uh, and in fact, he sees it come to be with him. Uh, and, and we see this image again uh, of uh, God saying, you know, Jerusalem has been my home, but I'm but I'm leaving uh, because there's been so much, so much. Okay. Uh, now we'll get to chapter eight. Yeah. And as we transition to chapter eight, when I say, but God is saying to his people, I I'm leaving because there's been so much class. So much what? what what's, the, what's the problem here? What's the issue? Idolatry. Idolatry, yeah. Yeah. Well, look, my green cup disappears in the. Uh, oh, there we go. That's funny. Okay, my green cup disappears. It doesn't take much to amuse some people. <laughs> it, it doesn't take much to amuse some people. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> good. Good. Okay. All right. So, what I'd like to do uh, is. Just take the moment to uh, to read uh, chapter uh, eight. It's eighteen verses, and um, I, I tell you what, um, Wes, say something to me. Hello. Oh yeah, you sound good. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm going to read one uh, verses uh, one through eight, 
And Wes, would you read 9 through 18? Okay. Okay, and that way we'll break up the monotony of my voice, and then you sound, your machine sounds good too. So, one day, I, Ezekiel, was, I was sitting in my house, and the elders of Judah were sitting there in front of me. This was now the fifth day of the sixth month of the sixth year of exile. Uh, suddenly, the power of the Lord God came on me. I saw something that looked like fire, a man's body. From the waist down, he was like fire. From the waist up, he was bright and shining like hot metal in fire. Then I saw something that looked like an arm. Uh, the arm reached out and grabbed me by the hair on my head. Then the Spirit lifted me into the air. In, in a vision from God, he took me to Jerusalem. He took me to the inner gate, the gate that is on the north side. The statue that makes God jealous is by the gate. But the glory of God, of the God of Israel, was there. The glory looked just like the vision I saw in the valley by the Kiber Canal. God spoke to me. He said, Son of man, look toward the north. So I looked, and there, north of the altar gate, by the entrance, was the statue that made God jealous. Then God said to me, Son of man, do you see what terrible things the people of Israel are doing? They built that thing here, right next to my temple. And if you come with me, you will see even more terrible things. So I went to the entrance of the courtyard and I saw a hole in the wall. God said to me, Son of man, make a hole in the wall. So I made a hole, or I dug a hole in the wall, and there I saw a door. Verse 9. And he said to me, Go in and see the wicked abominations which are they are doing there. So I went in and saw, and there every sort of creeping thing, abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed all around on the walls. There stood before them 70 men of the elders of the house of Israel, and in their midst stood Janaziah, the son of Zaphon. Each man had a censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the room of his idols? For they say, The Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. And he said to me, turn again, and you will see greater abominations that they are doing. So he brought me to the door of the north gate of the Lord's house, and to my dismay, women were sitting there weeping for Tammuz. Then he said to me, have you seen this, O son of man? Turn again, and you will see greater abominations than these. So he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and there at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about 75 men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, and they were worshiping the sun towards the east. And he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? It is a trivial thing to the house of Judah to commit these abominations which they commit here. For they have filled the land with violence, and they have returned to provoke me to anger. Indeed, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore, I will also act in fury. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, I will not hear them. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, just, to, just to make a connection here, uh, he used a, uh, a word early uh, in, the, uh, in the vision there, uh, saw all sort of creepy crawly things. Uh, just we can we can connect uh, to this. Uh, does it, does anyone have a creepy crawly thing that just really makes you your skin crawl when you see it? Why were they in there? Were they part of a ritual, or were they, they just in there as did they infest the place? I, I think we're gonna. I, I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get oh. to that. So Angela, I'll ask you. Do you have a, a favorite creepy crawly that really really makes you squirm? Um, bees and wasps. All right, bees and wasps. Yeah, yeah, good. Eddie, do you have a creepy crawly that really uh, creeps you out? 
Uh, I have to say snakes, I guess. I don't like snakes. Snakes, yeah. We're in the same club, Ed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Barb, do you have a, a creepy crawly that, that really gets you? I would have to agree with Eddie, snakes. Snakes? All right, good. A anyone else have a different one? We got these little multi-legged things in the house. Multi-legged crawly things, yeah. all right, good. Wes, you were taking your mute. Yeah, I was going to say, when I was in Lincoln, there was cockroaches frequently in places we were at. So yeah. oh, hopefully we don't yeah. always have them here, but they're fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see if I can get this uh, one more users. Uh, okay, all right. Um, I was just going to... Uh, uh, Throw that over to. I see Judy's got a mute on hers too, but that's okay. I won't. I tried to do that my to unmute that. All right. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Angela said, "Why was that image there? What was the point of that?" Uh, uh, he he says he saw these things. Well, okay. So he opens a door and he sees a, a few things. There's a few quick visions here that he sees. Uh, he opens a door and he sees uh, all of the people. Uh, well, these are the temple leaders. Right, let's be frank, right? So he sees these people out here uh, in the rooms and all over the walls. And I think, Angela, to answer your question, these are ca probably carvings is the idea that he's seeing, even though we see uh, images of uh, crawly things or reptiles. Other translations will just spell that out as reptiles. But... What were they doing with these? Let's say these are carvings on the wall. I'll give you that probably is what. Yeah, I just read it again. I, yeah, I think it's carvings yeah, on the wall. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's fun to imagine though. I mean, so, all right. So if snakes really creep me out, why would I carve them on the wall? Or beetles or bugs or multi-legged crawly things or spiders. Okay, so why were these images carved on the wall? Think big picture, and I think you got it easy. What's happening here? I think normally you would do that to honor something. You, you're afraid of something. You're gonna. It's so big and so powerful, and you're gonna honor it. You put a picture of it, and maybe they need to leave you alone. Yeah. Well. Sure. Right. Right. I think we have here that image exactly. Here he, he walks into a room and there they are even worshiping these old images that go back to Egypt, but doesn't have to go back to Egypt. And we're hundreds of years beyond Egypt. All through the, uh, the ancient world, they would worship these images. One. Two, he saw them worshiping that statue in uh, my courtyard, or God said, outside my temple, that makes God, uh, jealous. there's the word, jealous. Okay. Uh, three, we saw the women weeping for, did you uh, catch that? What were the women weeping for in this same image? Towards the end, in the Lord's temple area. It says the cult celebrated the shepherd king and god of vegetation. Okay. Uh, oh, he's got a footnote in the yeah. ESV. Uh, that was the Tammuz, right? right? They're associated with sacred marriage, seems clear. Yeah. Constitution. Yeah. So we've got a Mesopotamian, Mesopotamian god, Tammuz that they're worshiping a god of fertility is what this is uh, across the ancient world that's a big deal i think the snake is used as a sign of fertility in some of the idolatry cultures. yes i think the snake was also a part of that asherah pole when we read that in other places and it was a part of uh, uh, it was a fertility uh, 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 idol idol uh, and then three, they're in their rooms. They're in their rooms and they're worshiping these other things. They're, so imagine inside the temple, but they're in their private rooms. 
and they're worshiping these other things. How does God feel about that? He's going to act in fury. Yeah, in, in fury. He, they're, they're insulting his temple. They're uh, on the outside and on the inside. Do people do things in private that they think maybe nobody else is seeing? Well, duh. Well, do people do things in private that they think maybe God isn't even seeing? And that's what the scripture says, what is written here. They are doing it because they say God has forsaken us and he doesn't look at us anymore so we can do what we want to. Very good. Very good. Um, this is part of the small group study uh, in, our, uh, in our study outline. And of course, they wrap this up. The authors wrap this story, this this study up with the question: If if we're if we're now God's temple, what does when God looks inside us? What does he see? What does he see on the walls inside us? And so, um, that's. The essence of his message then is the idolatry is so great, as we saw with Jeremiah, that God has given them over to this Babylonian captivity. But it's not just the outward, um, we, we talked about the uh, abuse of, of uh, widows and those less fortunate, Jeremiah uh, nailed that. But here's one where Ezekiel is just, uh, illustrating this idolatry. Uh, take into, Bobby? Take into consideration Ezekiel has to up and go and try to soften the hearts of these hard-hearted individuals. We And God told him it's not going to be easy. However, all of these signs and the things that Ezekiel does is to try to get them to wake up, to up and start thinking about God instead of their own ways. But to do, we think they're strange, but they're ways to try to get people to yeah. change their mind. Yeah. And that's what the Ezekiel, Ezekiel is trying to do yeah. under the tutorage of the Lord. Yeah. And that's the key right there. The Lord is talking to them through Ezekiel, trying to get them to change their mind. God talks to us through his word, trying to make us do the right thing too. Yeah. Yeah. I'll stop preaching now. No, you're very good, <laughs> very good. Uh, other thoughts? Any any thoughts as we, uh, we're nearing the end here and we'll wrap up? Okay, all right. Um, okay, so let me throw this at you. What Bobby just said, God says to Ezekiel in another vision. Mm -hmm. Did you catch that? Look for that. Hopefully I'll, I'll remember to have that in the uh, outline for Sunday. Sunday's going to be much more positive. We're going to see, because uh, Ezekiel comes with, uh, you know, uh, God brings uh, some, some good news oh, yes. through, through Ezekiel as well. Yep. Very good. Well, All right. Let's, uh, let's close with a prayer and, uh, I'll leave this open for a few minutes and uh, we can we can chit chat, shall we? God, thank you for the day. Uh, thank you for loving us and blessing us. And thank you for uh, the, the many the many joys and blessings of this life. Uh, e even as we've been uh, living in a difficult time, um, God, thank you for the blessing of our church family. Uh, thank you that Sunday we were able to see that and be a part of that. And, and uh, Father, thank you uh, that we can come back together and, uh, and enjoy that fellowship and, and connection with one another as well as with you. Father, bless us. Uh, keep us ever in uh, your tender mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for uh, joining in uh, tonight. I'm going to leave this up.
I'm going to change my audio and uh, send uh, some music out to Facebook. Uh, but chat amongst yourselves here. Just a moment. Well, I am departing. How is Jeannie doing, Bobby? Jeannie, uh, Bobby, how is Jeannie, well, Jeannie doing? Jeannie is doing quite well. She has actually driven down to uh, Walgreens to get her medicine tonight, so she's doing a little bit better. Good. Oh, was she sick? No, no, just up and finally let her out of the house on her own. Oh. I think, yep. Be careful. How are the grandkids, Jerry and Mary? I didn't hear. Well, they're good. They, um, some of them just got back from a trip out west. We went to Toadstool Park and all that, so. Oh, so neat. How's the doggy doing, Wes and Linda? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, hyperactive, aren't you? Yep. Good doggy. <laughs> I am not skilled oh, he to talk, understand. John, I am not skilled to understand. What God has love. What God has planned. I only know what is right. Now I'm going to grab it. Yeah, she's hiding around the corner. She mowed you past me. Or your dear still running hard and Mary. The what? I do work in daycare, both of you have three daycare centers. So I don't work in daycare. Oh, okay. Before I knew my Savior, my Savior loves my Savior. Let's go my Savior's always there for me. My God, he was, my God, he is, my God is always going to be. Actually, I'm not the devil. My Savior is always there for me. My God, he was, my God, he is, my God is always going to be. How many meals did you serve today, Barbie? Yes, I don't know the exact total. I didn't hear. Did you, Linda? I don't know if we did a thousand today or not. It was Taco Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, one in bar helped with the uh, hot sauce. Oh, okay. Set up to Lee Center. My Savior loves my Savior lives. My Savior is always oh, there for me. Yeah. My God, He was. My God, He is. My God is always gonna be. My Savior loves. My Savior lives. My Savior is always there for me. My God, He was. My God, He is. My God is always gonna be. My Savior loves. My Savior lives. My Savior. Hmm. I feel for you, Dee. I've been mowing quite a bit today. I bet you have. Yeah. <laughs> 
You probably got right on. I find my Yeah. Mom for rounds. I fall apart. Well, I worked I worked real hard today. Had to take the water. Lord, I need you. Watch her wherever she went. Kept her safe. That's a lot of work. Did you take supper for her tonight since she did all that? <laughs> you gotta be kidding. <laughs> no. Uh, I wouldn't dare do that. Oh God, how I need He helps you. He helps you. That's right, I do dishes. Helps. <laughs> That's a lot of work. <laughs> you poor for things. I mentioned Applebee's earlier. It was very quiet in there because they have their restrictions, and it was that right after lunch. And uh, basically, it's they have all the restrictions. You have to take your plates and silverware on spray. The servers have face masks and gloves on, and uh, they have disposable menus that they hand out. Sounds like a good thing. Oh, yeah. It's just different. Okay. Well, we went and ate at Los Angeles, and it was so good. <laughs> Is that by Stagecoach? Yeah. Yeah, I've been there a couple times. What was that name? Los Angeles? That's... How I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Those mogways. <laughs> there you go. That sounds more familiar. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Oh, we eat at Mama D's. And when I cannot stand, I'll fall on Yeah, Dad wanted a steak and he wanted to go to Applebee's and he said it's time to start moving on and get back to normal. And he said, okay, I'll go with you, Dad. I had that real chicken breast and it was pretty good. We took my mom to Red Club. Sunday afternoon. She's sick of being home. Then she didn't want to go home. <laughs> yeah, I do feel blessed. I get frustrated sometimes at work, but I do feel blessed to have the job I have right now. And I'm able to get out and have a reason to go leave the house. So, yeah. Yep. And a paycheck. Well, I think I'm going to go to bed. You are good. You are good. It's still daylight outside. Is it time to go? It's not time to go to bed yet. No. I have to go finish my mowing. You are light. Yeah. When the darkness closes in, you got an hour of daylight left. You are whole. You have covered all my sins. Good to see everybody. Yes. Yeah. Nice to see you all. I know everybody. When my fear is crippling, you are true, you are true. Even in my wandering, you are joy, you are joy. You're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life. In you, death has lost its sting. Oh, I'm running to your arms. creation will proclaim you are here you are here 
in your presence I may hold. You are God, you are God, of all else I'm letting go. Out. 